So hi guys, this is SJ speaking and in today's video we are going to see about uh, Dow theory. So before going into the video, I am personally teaching trading. So if you want to join my mentorship course, you can call me by the number given on the video scrolling below and I will give you the details and I am also providing discounts for the first 25 members. So if you are interested, you can join my course. So uh, you can make consistent profits. My course would help you to make consistent profits. It will be really worth the money you pay for the course. So thank you guys. So uh, now let's go into the video. So let's see about what is Dow theory. So uh, this is the introduction. So uh, first uh, it was uh, named after Charles H. Dow. So this theory was named after him and he is considered as the father of technical analysis. So uh, this is older than 100 years but still it remains the foundation of technical analysis. So this Dow theory is the foundation of technical analysis. So uh, this uh, Charles Dow actually he lived during these years 1851 to 1902 but he never wrote any book or published his complete theory on the market. Uh, but several followers and associated uh, have uh, published his work based upon his theory. So his theory reflected his, uh, the belief on its uh, stock market behavior. So these uh, uh, reflected uh, his belief on, on how the stock market uh, behaved. So some of the contributors to this Dow theory are the first person is Samuel A. Nelson. So he first used this uh, term Dow theory and he uh, published a book known as ABC of stock speculation. And second William P. Hamilton. He wrote a book named the stock market barometer which consists uh, which has the summary of the findings that Charles Dow and Samuel A. Nelson have gathered. And next Robert Rea. He wrote a book named uh, the Dow theory. George E. Schaffner. He bought a book titled How I Helped More Than 1000, 10,000 Investors to Profit in Stocks. And next comes the Richard Result. He wrote a book titled The Dow Theory Today. So uh, this is the introductions. And then comes the principles. What the Dow Theory suggests. So these are the principles of the stock market. Uh, sorry, uh, Dow Theory. The first principle is that the stock market discounts all information. Then the second principle stock market have three trends, third principle primary trend have three phases, fourth principle stock market indexes must confirm each other, fifth principle volume must confirm the trend and sixth principle trend remains intact and until and otherwise uh, clear until another unless clear signals uh, reversal signals occur. So I will explain all these principles in uh, separately. So the first principle states that the stock market discounts all information. The meaning for this is simple. The first principle suggests that the stock price represents the sum total of hopes, fears and expectations of all participants and discounts all the information that is known about the stock. So uh, what uh, suppose if the company publishes a quarterly results or earnings results, this is, this is get reflected in the stock price. Uh, likewise, uh, there are different participants. For example, some might trade based upon fundamentals, some might trade based upon news, some might trade based upon chart patterns, some might trade based upon uh, uh, because they are working in a company, they might buy the shares of the same company. So many, there are different kinds. Some might even, they know nothing about stock market, then they enter the market. They just gamble. Uh, if they win, they will win uh, the money. If they lose, they will move, lose almost the entire amount. Like that, they gamble in the market. So all these market participants, their hopes, their fears, all is reflected in the stock price. So this is what it denotes. Likewise, the government decisions, the central bank's decisions, the interest rate hikes uh, and uh, several other macroeconomic factors, these are also reflected in the uh, uh, stock market, stock market's price. Likewise, uh, this, uh, this, uh, the, everything is reflected in the stock price except the natural calamities such as tsunami, earthquake, cyclones. These are not reflected. So, uh, um, so this is how this is the first principle. Then the second principle is that stock market have three trends. So Dow theory states uh, stock market is made up of three trends: the first primary trend, secondary trend, and minor trend. So what is the primary trend? I will explain it in the uh, live chart. So wait. So and also I missed one point in the first principle. So the stock market makes tops and bottom ahead of the economy. Before, for example, if the economy um, is in recession and even before the economy recovers, before the uh, before the economy recovers from the recession, before you get the news that the economy recovers, already the market stocks uh, makes the bottom and starts moving up before the economy uh, the news and uh, comes. 
everything comes in the news it uh, goes up so likewise uh, before the uh, any bad news comes in the news uh, the market already uh, hits the top and begins falling before itself on 3 to 4 months before itself it comes down so this is what this states it makes stops and bottom ahead of the economy or you can say business cycles or something like that um so these are the three trends i will show you uh, in the live chart so you can see the primary trend is here so this is the primary uptrend and this is the primary downtrend so this is the direction that uh, the every trader so you can hear that everyone would say trade with the trend so this is what it denotes you have to trade with the primary trend whether it's uptrend or downtrend so this lasts from one year to several years so usually it uh, runs for more than a year so uh, uh, then next comes the secondary trend uh usually the second the secondary trend always lies within the primary trend so in case of uptrend it is known as corrections and in case of downtrend it is known as pullbacks so these are the primary trend and the, the secondary trend lies within the primary trend so you can see so this is uptrend and this is downtrend example so uh, you can also investors usually must uh, invest uh, by following the primary trend whereas uh, positional traders uh, also must follow the primary trend but uh, swing traders can also use the secondary trend and uh, but the final prime minor trend so this is the minor trend so these occur within the secondary trend so this is uh, the prime secondary trend usually is in the direction opposite direction of primary trend likewise the minor trend is in opposite direction of the secondary trend it might uh, be in the same directions of the primary trend itself but you should not take your trading decisions based upon this minor trend you should ignore these only intraday traders and scalpers can use these minor trends and make profit otherwise you should uh, ignore this even for swing trading you have to ignore it uh, sometimes you can use the even for swing trade but no usually avoid it. so this la secondary trend last between um, several weeks to months so around 6 months to it can be uh, there that uh, this minor trend can be for around a uh, few weeks so since i am saying weeks uh, you might wonder but then i can do swing trading you might wonder definitely you can use uh, swing trading but usually uh, when you are taking positional trading you should avoid these minor trends so you have to ignore these trends so this might not last uh, this is just an assumption that it might last for about several weeks but it might even end sooner than before so the next third principle is that um, third principle is that the primary trend have three phases accumulation phase public participation or simply you can say it as participation phase or uh, then the distribution phase so uh, so you can see um, this i will show in the uh, live chart so you can see so this is uh, so you can see this is uh, how the market uh, so this is the phase actually so wait one minute so actually uh, before the market would come down here so once the market comes starts falling because of any bad news or some stuffs so retail investors panic and they sell they uh, the market comes down because of fear in the market they the many people the public they get fear that the market is uh, economy is going to collapse and they just sell it then the when the retail investors sell these institutions buy from these uh, retail that is the normal people buy from the normal people these institutions on the value investors buy from the normal people and they starts accumulating the stocks and once the accumulation is over the stock prices starts to increase so they start selling at higher prices so once this occurs the retail investors only participate uh, the you will receive the news that the market is recovering only after it bottoms out and it comes uh going up for a certain moment only after getting uh, bottomed out and it goes up for a few uh, weeks or months and then only in the news you will see that the economy is recovering so this is what i have explained in the first principle that the market makes stops and bottom ahead of the economy why it makes ahead of the economy it's because the institutions start buying even before the economy it starts recovering so then you receive the news that the economy is recovering and the public gets participated only here and once at uh, the market is in a higher hype they will think that the market is going to forever go up then they will buy at higher price even at higher prices 
so the, these institutions who bought at lower prices they make an opportunity and they will think that this is the right time to sell and they start distributing their shares to the normal public so the retail investors so this is known as distribution phase and they get out of the market by making profits whereas the retail investors get the stocks from the institutions and they will after the institution exit the market starts falling and the retail investors have to face losses so this is how the market takes place so these are the three phases that the in this dow theory uh, dow theory suggests and uh, i have also explained on my market structure video about these uh, uh, phases in detail you can visit that uh, video you can watch that video so i have explained about this uh, higher highs and higher lows and uh, lower highs lower lows and several other stuffs in that video so that is one important video you can watch that so this is the third principle and uh, again the accumulation starts here again it starts here and the market goes up and again distribution occurs and the market falls down so this repeats again and again so uh, next comes the fourth principle uh, the fourth principle stock market indexes must confirm each other index or benchmark so these index for example in our indian market the nifty 50 bank nifty uh, nifty media nifty metal nifty uh, oil and gas nifty energy so these are the benchmarks or indexes so uh, these uh, for example nifty 50 so in our country india so the nifty 50 the first top 50 companies in terms of market capitalization so these reflect the overall economy so these if these stocks fall down there is something wrong with the economy and if if these stock increases continuously the economy is booming improving so this is a normal assumptions so uh, dow theory uh, when he lived in america uh, so he, when he lived in america he used his uh, two strategies uh, two indexes sorry so dow jones industrial index and rail index so now known as transportation index because in those days us was a growing industrial economy and urban centers and production centers were apart so factories have to transport the goods by railroad so the he used these two indexes so uh, if only these two index grace go in uptrend then the market is an uptrend if one index goes up and one index goes down then there is not a clear trend if both are in downtrend then the market is in downtrend so uh, one uh, if one goes up and one goes down it's not a clear trend so this is how he suggests so you can read these lines uh, so read these sentences if you are interested by passing the video so what he basically uh, says if the business conditions is are improving and they are good the market would increase and if the business conditions are poor the market would decrease next fifth principle this is simple uh, if the primary trend uh, goes if the stock price goes up the market is also increasing then the trend is strong otherwise uh, if the market price alone is increasing the, the volume is not increasing the trend is weak likewise uh, this is the same in case of downtrend so this is a uh, simple uh, you can see the volume should also increase along with the trend so in case of buying the buying volume should increase in case of selling the selling volume should increase and the sixth principle trend remains continuous intact until and otherwise clear reversal signals occur so what he says uh, until you find any reversal uh, signals you should uh, not get out of the market you can hold your stock so uh, till the market uh, shows a reversal strong reversal signal so the next thing is that if you are willing uh, the stock market is controlled by money only one and one m which is known as money so if there is uh, if the mini money is pumped on buying side the stock market goes up if mini money is pumped on the selling side the market goes down so this is what who our the, if the buyers overall buyers have more money they win the market if the overall sellers have more money they uh, bring the market down so this is what he suggests and uh, these are the six principles so uh, though uh, it has some uh, drawbacks pros and cons the pros are that this is the foundation this leaded uh, this is only this dow theory made the technical analysis popular before this uh, this theory ca uh, came uh, the technical analysis wasn't that much popular so this uh, made uh, uh, this paved the way for the market structure that is higher highs higher uh, lows so that is why he is known as the father of technical analysis and dow theory is known as the foundation of technical analysis and the cons that is the drawbacks is that for example uh, so the fourth principle you can see the these two index 
or uh, can't be used in now today's economy because in today's economy stock prices a major uh, movement of the stock price is due to the IT sector technology sector and the finance sectors so the banking stocks and the IT stocks uh, these move the market morely more than the index index stocks uh, industrial stocks stocks so uh, using these uh, two uh, for uh, looking at these two index now is not a good thing so you can't use these now now you have to look at the it sectors and other uh, sectors uh, banking sectors though these run the market mainly so this is one of the drawback of dow theory so these are the pros and cons and this is how this is what the dow theory is so hope you guys enjoyed this video so give a like share and subscribe to my channel and uh, share it with your friends and family and, uh, and also press the bell icon so you get notified for my videos press the all button and also comment on my video so i will get motivated i will know whether you like the video or not and uh, also if you want to join my trading course you can call me by the number in the scrolling below i'm providing discounts for the first 25 members and if you want to open a dmat account or trading account so you can uh, visit the link zerota link on the video description on all my youtube videos i have given you my the zerota link you can start uh, by opening a dmat account from today onwards so thank you guys, I will visit you on my next video, until then bye bye take care.